As geosport and adventure riders, I'm sure we've all spent many hours searching and hoping to find the perfect tyre for both on and off-road use. Purchasing my AJP PR7 set me on such a path during the COVID-19 lockdown in 2020. Research on tyres brought up some possibilities, but tyre pressures just seemed to lead to even more questions. So I set about trying to create some tools to inform my decision making. Apart from the continuous research, I've drawn up a tyre spec chart, developed a calculating spreadsheet to suggest minimum safe pressures for weight and speed, which allows me to compare tyres. Additionally, I've made some stop frame videos of the front and rear tyres, all of which I'm sharing with you today, and of course, actual testing, which is ongoing and will be reported back when complete. Having decided on and fitted the Dunlop Trailmax Mission tyres, after riding on them for a few weeks, I felt I needed to do some work into understanding the tyre pressures required to get the best out of them off-road. The rear, as noted elsewhere, has superb traction even in mud. The front, however, was too easily slipping sideways and tipping me off. So was there anything I could do to improve things? Things to consider were AJP's tyre pressure recommendations of 1.5 to 2.3 bar, tyre manufacturer specifications, changes to motorcycle weight, local versus long ride, temperature impact, garage temperature to outside temperature changes, was the rim size an issue, how low was safe, and could I run the same pressure on and off road for my local rides. Before we start, I must state that I am not a tyre engineer. I'm just a rider with too much time on his hands searching for guidance. I do not suggest that you should use my methods or findings on your own tyres, so please do your own research before riding out and stay safe. Though I do hope you might find some merit in the conveying of my own experiences. To understand how AJP's pressure recommendations related to the tyre manufacturer's guidance, I drew up a linear representation of the tyre spec and added the AJP pressures. This, as you can see, consists of the max tyre speed on the vertical axis, max weight on the horizontal, and max tyre pressure on the diagonal. AJP pressures are shaded in green. As the American Dunlops were in PSI, I created the chart and spreadsheet in PSI and degrees Fahrenheit, and included some converters to switch between the two. I appreciate this is a straight line representation of a dynamic tyre design and therefore may not directly relate to tyre behaviour, but I had to start somewhere. I was pleased to see that the speed indicated at 2.3 bar equated to the theoretical top speed of the PR7 and the 1.5 bar showed around 100 km per hour, which seemed a realistic off-road speed expectation and appeared to justify the effort of drawing up the graph. So what about weight? I noted the Trailmax Mission tyre had the same 41 psi max pressure for both front and rear, but when I checked the Michelin Desert Race tyres that came with the bike, they were 33 psi front and 39 psi rear. So how did the tyre's weight handling capability tie up with my PR7 weight? Reading speed and weight based on tyre pressure can be done just by drawing lines across and down the chart from the relevant point on the diagonal line pressure point. However, I would need a chart for each individual tyre spec, so I decided to create a spreadsheet to more readily visualise the readout. I won't go into specifics here. I may well make a separate video on the spreadsheet later, if there's any interest in it. Enough is to say that it took me a while to decide on the parameters I needed to include. To develop an accurate value for the PR7 front and rear weights, I actually weighed it on two household bathroom scales that could just handle the riderless weight of the bike. The rider and luggage weight distribution had to be calculated for now. I also added the ability to see the impact on tyre pressure by temperature change. Research had uncovered a suggested approximate 1 psi change to tyre pressure per 10 degrees Fahrenheit. 
As my PR7 is stored in a heated garage at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, riding out in 39 degrees Fahrenheit could have a significant impact on my low pressure settings, so I wanted to see roughly what that was. Once they had the sheet working, playing around with the two tyre specifications I had available showed some promise. This mock-up of a theoretical 110kg 250 enduro with rider showed a safe pressure of around 13 to 14 psi, which is around those talked about online. So I was encouraged that there might be some merit in this approach. By the way, blue is local weight and pink is long ride. For the PR7 with the Trailmax missions for local use, it suggested 24 psi front and only 19.95 psi rear. The rear pressure was outside AJP suggested range, so was the spreadsheet producing wrong results. When I entered the desert race data, the results did seem to suggest a logical pressure. If 12 to 15 psi was good for a 110 to 120 k bike, the suggested 19 psi for the Evier PR7 seemed fair, so maybe not all was lost. Having gradually dropped the tyre pressures for road use without seeing significant change to performance, I decided I would like to see for myself what was happening to the tyre shape as the pressure changed. This step was inspired by several things. One, Yet another fall due to front slip while riding off-road. Two, I realise the rims on the PR7 are much narrower than Dunlop's recommended rim size for the tyre. 0.6 on the front and a whole inch on the rear. This, I thought, could be making the tyre more round in profile and stopping the edges from contacting the ground as designed. And finally, I had read somewhere that a Dunlop tyre engineer had told a reporter that the design meant the tyre would not break the bead at zero pressure. And so to the stop frame videos. These videos were made with me standing on the pegs and jumping up and down to see the impact. So there is around 275 kg total bike weight during these pictures, which are freeze frames from the video. By the way, jumping up and down had little impact on the profile. I was hoping to move in one PSI steps, but my new digital pump had a different idea, hence the step changes, sorry. But the pressure increases have given me the information I was looking for. Looking at these images, I feel the tyres will safely run much lower pressures. I have already run the minimum 1.5 bar off-road setting on the road at the suggested speed of around 100 km per hour and I feel great. This is something I would not have been willing to do without seeing these images first. I'm hoping to talk to some Dunlop engineers at the Overland event in September just to see if my research matches theirs, fingers crossed. So until then, more physical testing and I will report back later. Thanks for watching. I hope it won't be too long before I can get back with some detailed observations. See you soon.